record. Haha. Good morning and welcome to Creation Tide. Good morning. Four? Or are we on five now? We're on five now, aren't we? We've got one more to go. Four. Four. Okay, we're on Creation. We, I'll keep adding the intro into that. Intro and four. So we're on Creation Tide four. I <laughs> get myself confused. And today's theme is the gift of water. Hello um, to Father Neil. Hello, everybody. And to Reverend Marcus. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Um, yes, as I was saying, our theme today is the gift of water, and our um, Bible passage today is from Philippians 2, verses 1 to 13. Now, if I'd been sensible, I'd have found this out before we started recording, but I didn't. So, there it is. <laughs> okay, so Philippians 2. So if there, if there is any encouragement in Christ, any comfort from love, any participation in the spirit, any affection and sympathy, complete my joy by being of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourselves. Let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men and being found in human form. He humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So... Um, I thought it would be quite helpful this morning um, if we talked about one of the most important parts of that passage for you guys. So, yeah, we just begin mm. there. Um, I suppose for me, it would be verse four. And I'm reading from the NIV here, um, but it's very similar to what you read, Sophie, which I think was NRSV. It was, yeah. Um, each of you should look not only to your own interests, but also to the interests of others. Um, and in the world today, particularly in our Western industrialized nations, we kind of have um, also almost um, have this totemic attitude towards um, individualism and towards achievement. And we measure achievement and how successful people are by the amount of money they have and the amount of possessions that they have. Whereas there are other um, indigenous peoples across the world where success is measured in terms of the amount of friends that you have, your standing in the community, and um, they, they raise up people of great service to the community. We still do that. We still, in this country, honour people who have shown a spirit of service. We give out British Empire medals and we give out OBEs and that sort of stuff. But we, at the same time, we seem to focus our gaze on people who are successful in business and who have accumulated great wealth. And it's, and it's that model. Um, and we know that the, uh, the epistle to the Philippians from Paul is Paul being very thankful because the Philippians had sent him this gift. So he writes back to them to say thank you. Um, but it's not just about that. It's about joy, finding joy in all places. Joy is mentioned in Philippians more than any other word. And here it's joy in service. And that joy goes against individualism. And it's ironic because I was just explaining to you guys what the, um, 
what the equation says on, on the front of my shirt, <laughs> which is a very individualistic equation. Um, so the square root of minus one is i, uh, the cube of two is eight, um, that's the mathematical symbol for everything, and um, of course that's pi. So I ate all the pie and it was delicious, which is the, almost the epitome of Western consumption. And here I am saying, oh, we need to, we need to share with other people. Um, <laughs> I didn't really think this through. In my, um, I just, oh, you didn't think it through really well. <laughs> I really, no, really, really didn't. I should have just worn the, the, the clericals and, and, and a bit chilly uh, here in Hanford West this morning. So, um, and I'm not putting the heating on deliberately as, a, as part of the, um, the environmental thing. My daughters, who are both well, one's in 20, the other's in their teens, both think it's just dad being tight. Um, but I've said that I will be prepared to put the heating on um, uh, the feast, on the Feast of Michael and All Angels, which they say is a very abstract date, why I picked that. Uh, and I'm not quite sure. But. You're going to try and hold out for October if you can, haven't you, really? Yes. Yeah. Hold out for Francis tight, patron saint of the environment, October the 4th, and then just keep pushing it back. That's a good target, Neil, isn't it? I haven't thought of that. October the 4th, in fact. Yeah, getting it back a bit. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. They absolutely. haven't wanted the heating on yet, have they? It's been so warm, my word. But oh, I'm... no, they seem to be part <laughs> lizard. Um, so. Uh... But today. Um... But yeah, for me, it's, for, it's that verse, this verse four is what I would pick out. If I was going to be preaching to a congregation, if I was going to be taking a key verse and then exploring the other. Um, the other proper's from that, um, yeah. and that's the one that I would have honed in on. Yeah, well, I mean that that is that is the key, isn't it? And then the verses that follow illustrate that, you know, by showing how Christ lived lived it out. You know, and, and there's just some of the most beautiful verses that Paul ever wrote. Mm. Really, you know, up there with um, one Corinthians thirteen and, and so on, and just this, you know, Christ who didn't, you know claimed for quality of God, but emptied himself, taking him a form of a servant and died in even, de even death on a, even death on a cross. And it just gives, you know, gives us this call really to, to do likewise. And, um, but of course what follows then is the, the verses um, nine to 11, the end of it is that, that that isn't giving yourself entirely as Christ has shown. It, it doesn't mean you you just extinct you know, get snuffed out and extinguished and disappear but actually that is how um, that's the most impactful thing you can do you know if you're talking in a modern way that is where um the kingdom of god is built that acts of love and service are what last aren't they and acts of selfishness are what dissipate and and just turn into dust dust and sand and christ has shown that you know in in, in, the, in the resurrection and calls us to do to do the same and I guess it's interesting because our thing this week is um the gift of water and um and it, it, I guess it's chosen perhaps with with this in mind but it's just um water is one of the most powerful forces on, on on the earth isn't it for shaping the physical world around us amongst its many other functions but of course it always takes a path of least resistance and, and runs around things and, and so on but but it's but but nonetheless you know um, and it takes a sort of humble path in a way, but nonetheless, it's what it sort of shapes our world um, in ways that we can see in, in ways that last. So there's quite a, a good parallel there, I think, between the humility of Christ and, and the humility of, of, of uh, water. And um, actually, it links to what St. Francis, the, you know, the Canticle of the Creatures, mm. Canticle of Brother Son, there's that one verse where he talks about water. You get it, it talks about the fire, wind, earth, and, and so on, and water. And um, he calls the most pure and chaste and humble um, uh, 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 and, and so on is a uh, sister water kind of recognizing that aspect of water that is just what it is rather um, it, you know, it sort of speaks of humility really it doesn't sort of put itself out there and forward like fire does in a way but but yet somehow it's it's hugely hugely powerful you know, I won't go I won't keep going but that's you know because we, we, we can explore that uh, later on but there's a yeah this sense of sacrificial living you know that, that that christ exemplifies you know it's just the heart of that beautiful passage i think it's a it's a shame uh, that 
we speak English, <laughs> so it's, that we don't speak Greek, that we don't uh, realize that, that 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 bit there that, that Paul is writing is a hymn, that it, actually it's very, in the Greek, it's very poetic, it's very lyrical. Mm. Um, and the, the people listening to that would have probably sort of like then taken that, that passage from verse uh, six uh, to 11 and lifted up their voices and sung it um, because it can, music can stir us. I mean, you're in the cathedral, Sophie, you know that more than most mm. um, because, you know, the cathedral in St. David's is blessed with this ministry of music. Um, and I can remember as a little kid singing um, Water of Life. Jesus gives us yeah. the water of life. It's water, water of life. Jesus gives us the water of life. Um, and it is that, it's like an earworm. It, it, that, little, um, that little refrain just sticks in your head as a child. Um, and roots itself somehow in your subconscious. It's interesting with, with um, Philippians as well. I, I hadn't realised till I was, I was just reading a little bit the, the other day. And um, so the name of the city the, in, in sort of northeastern Greece, named after Alexander the Great's dad, Philip. But before that, it was called um, Crinides or something similar, which meant wells or springs. So there's a, there's a real water theme in that place as well, which is, which is intriguing um, for our theme today. And, um, and you know, you're right, that, that song, which is sort of about, it sort of reflects one of Christ's teachings, doesn't it? But the water of life being another symbol, really, of the Holy, of the Holy Spirit. Mm. And, and that's a very, a very useful um, analogy, really, um, and a counterpoint to sort of the, the spirit as, as wind and fire and so on. And it's that, because there is that sense in, in water, with water in the physical world, that it just, it supports all life, um, um, but in a humble way, and it itself sort of unchanged, and it just, it just sustains everything, and allows everything to happen, facilitates all the reactions, the chemical reactions that you know, we need for, in our bodies, it facilitates all the movement of water, resources, energy around, around, around the world, it, all was done by water, it, nothing would happen without it, yet somehow it's in the background, you know, and you could kind of ignore, you could not notice it's, it's there but it's that, that humility but it's a great symbol of the spirit all around the world um, and it's that first sacramental action as well it's baptism mm -hmm. um it's immersion in the water or it's having water poured over um you three times in the name of the trinity um and it, it, it's that water symbolic water um, and that sacramental action that brings you into the family of the church um, and in the church in Wales now brings you fully and completely into the family of the church, allows you access to the sacrament of the Eucharist. Um, so, you know, we should see water as so um, intrinsic to our own faith journey as well. Mm. Yeah, I mean... It, 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 the parallels, it's interesting really because you know, cause we're, as, as incarnated beings, you know, as, as um, ma made from the earth, what, you know, we're made of, I think, 60% water, isn't it, as well. And it kind of reflects the, the, the surface of the earth, which is 70% water. We kind of, you know, we re reflect our background in, in, that, in that as well. And so, um, but somehow, you know, I think for me that speaks to the fact that actually our, our life is based around not just the water, but the spirit of God in the Holy Spirit as well. Without that, you know, we're, we're nothing. We might not recognize it, but it's that that, you know, holds us in, in being and, and, and animates us as well. The passage talks of humility and love, compassion and generosity of heart, emptying oneself, counting others more significant than yourself. Some of the most basic human needs, as we've already spoken about, are answered by the gift of water. And yet there are people in the world who still have no access to clean water. What are the, some of the ways that we as Christians should be addressing this problem, particularly in light of this passage? Oh, <laughs> the thing is, water is so bound up with every single environmental issue that you can't almost set it aside 
in one in, in one way. Um, so um, right from uh, limiting your showers to five minutes um, and in our own country we let the taps run when there are other people who have to trudge miles to get clean water to um, we were talking earlier about you know heating um, that uses water um, the way that we going back to Archdeacon Eileen two uh, podcasts ago the way that we farm and using water in a sustainable manner, but also not allowing um, pollution. Um, in this, in in Wales, um, the biggest cause of pollution into waterways um, is actually agricultural waste um, entering our, our waterways. Mm. Um, Plant-based meals, going meatless Monday. Um, it meat uses more water. The 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 uh, the care of animals uses more water than um, producing vegetables can. And then, we, of course, we get on to the whole, what we're actually doing to water itself. The plastics in the ocean, so reducing the type of plastics that we use, um, unplugging, refilling, reusing, recycling. It's so difficult. To, to pick out an area of the climate crisis that water is not intrinsic to. Hey, you're right, it's, it's, it's rather like, <clears throat> excuse me, um, uh, energy, isn't it? And when you start thinking of that, you realize actually, you know, it's, it's linked to everything, everything that you do. And um, I mean, for, for, us, for us in the UK, we, we use, I think it's about 150 liters of water per person per day. In, in the house you know comes comes through and that's you know washing cooking cleaning uh, watering the garden uh, and whatever and there's the ways of reducing that you, you know you mentioned about in the showers and so on or installing a low flush toilet you know um easily done um but uh, but interestingly what you also what you mentioned as well when we talk about food is that that's only a fraction of the water that we use but that's the visible water that you can see you know so we use about 20 times more than that but it's kind of hidden away isn't it in embedded in the stuff that we use and so food food is one of them and also whatever consumer goods we're using uh, as well and just stuff that we stuff that we consume so uh, i've got a little illustration that i set one up for you um oh. was neil has hap ha happily uh, linked in so thinking of food in particular okay so, um so, so much of the water is hid hidden away so if you think of like a nice watery food like a tomato and uh, probably there's about two buckets loads of water behind producing that, just irrigation and a bit of cleaning and so on. Um, uh, get to something, then animal, animal origin like an egg, and uh, suddenly there's about 17 buckets of water behind that, even though it's the same size as the tomato. That's because you're growing the grain um, to feed the hen and you're you know, cleaning and processing and so on. Um, but if you go to a burger, and I couldn't get a burger, you know, but I've got a bun, you have to imagine there's a burger in it, and, uh, but like a beef burger there. <laughs> and uh, 300 buckets of water, incredible, you know, really. And um, I know we're not quite comparing light with light, but you're right, you're right Neil, about your food choices have a massive impact on the water that's used. Um, and, and actually, of course, most of that water is from around the world and probably imported um, to us. And so, um, you know, and often, you know, taking that water from local communities that, that might need, not, not always, you know, of course, we have homegrown beef, but it, it can be what's going on. And uh, if you want to move into the realm of consumer goods and stuff, a pair of jeans, um, 40,000 litres of water, you know, incredible, really. So um, we're talking like, you know, I don't know, a year supply or something um, from the house. And um, it's not, so it's not just growing the cotton, that's probably like all the dyeing and the processing and so on. So it's just... So what and the transportation of goods. And transportation. Um, you know, an avocado um, takes 320 litres of water to grow, a single avocado, okay? <laughs> One avocado, 320 litres to, to grow, um, because it is such a, a water-consuming uh, plant. 
it takes another 283 litres of water to transport that avocado to this country. So you're talking about roughly 600 litres of water per avocado um, for you to, to put it on your toast. Uh, and this is, goes back to what Archdeacon Eileen again said two uh, podcasts ago about buying local, eating local, eating sustainably. Mm. Um, yeah, it, yeah. It, it does make a bit of a mind... Sorry, Sophie, you're going to say... Well, I was just going to say that buying local is a minefield in itself mm. because buying local means buying food that is produced locally. It doesn't necessarily mean buying from your local greengrocers who's imported a load of mangoes and avocados from wherever. So be careful when you use, <laughs> use the term because otherwise you end up buying avocados. Mm. <laughs> we now, we now have to find a way, Sophie, before this particular session ends to embarrass um, Marcus because... Um, I've been embarrassed by the fact that I ate <laughs> you, you have been embarrassed because you're uh, drinking avocado smoothie at the moment. So we need to find maybe if Mark. Yeah. Okay. So we, because we we've, we've been thinking about water and and its impact on it on the environment, and it's quite different depending where you live, as you can imagine. So for us in the West, when we're consuming excess water, which we do, even in even in our, our wet nation, it has the impacts it has are generally um, despoiling our local ecosystems, depleting rivers and so on, which is significant. You know. Um, uh, for, for us in, in, in the UK, um, but also contributing to climate change because our, our water takes quite a lot of energy to produce. Um, more, more, the more so if it's hot water. So if you're profligate of your hot water and, and so on, then you are adding to greenhouse gases. And of course, we've talked about consuming things, you know, and the, the water that's embedded in that. So a lot of our impact, there's an ecological impact, but a lot of it is, is um, the sort of wider thing of climate change and so on spreading actually the impacts elsewhere around the world which is generally what we do with our pollution isn't it so um but uh in a developing world when people people the impact of, of water generally is more on, on human health you know so um it's about scarcity of resources and the fact that people don't have the water they need and it, and it makes and it makes them um poorly to drink bad water um and often then uh, the water they do have is used to grow cash crops and other things to send off to rich countries like us. So it does have very different effects depending, depending um, you know, on, on where you are, where you are in the globe. So, um, but for us, you know, I think some of the things we talked about, if you want to minimise our impact, it's, it's the same sort of set of suite of things that you think about for energy as well. It's just sort of lowering your consumption, being a little bit uh, conserving what what you use, um, and um, uh, you know, and thinking about the impact on your neighbours around the world um, which can be complicated can't it you know when you're shopping and so on but but simple rules of thumb like you know trying to re reduce reuse recycle and actually what you mentioned Neil about the food that you eat and and um, steering away from a really meat heavy diet um, is always helpful not only for environmentally but for your health you know I say that with some trepidation in, in a rural um, um, area like we are in Wales it doesn't mean you have to have no meat at all but it just means choose good quality meat and enjoy that, you know, so you can buy it local at a good cost and, and, um, and enjoy having it. And you know, you know, really, that, um, that uh, you're supporting local farmers, but, um, and the money stays locally, uh, um, you know, so it doesn't necessarily mean avoiding it entirely. I think you can kill all these, all these things simultaneously um, uh, as well. We have to remember that we are global citizens. Mm. So that, that line in Philippians, um, that, that verse four about um, you should not look only to your own interests, but also in the interests of others, makes us part of this global web. And as global warming comes in, um, to use a technical term, you have something called a Hadley cell expansion, which means that as the world heats up, the temperature difference between the poles and the equator decreases. 
and it changes the air currents, which means that clouds move away from the equator and start to move towards the poles. So that means that there are now vast swathes of sub-Saharan Africa, the Middle East and Central America that don't have rainwater. But correspondingly, the, those changes in weather patterns mean that there is increased rainfall elsewhere. And that is the result then of flooding and cyclones. And we see in India and Bangladesh, hundreds of people dying as a result of flooding um, and millions of people being affected. Um, and we also talked about last week about um, the fact that as the world is heating up, so um, there are going to be more climate change refugees mm. um, and uh, on the back of that I, I, I did have a look um, and the UN says that by um, 2050 there's going to be 54 million climate change re um, refugees so you know that's that's sort of like three quarters of this country mm. are going to be displaced as a result of uh, a rising water table. Mm. You, you, you often hear it talked about thinking about global conflict. You know, we, we've been we've thought over the decades about scarcity of resources and oil, and, and of course, there's been conflict over that. You know, but I think it, it's, it's not fanciful to think actually that water will be a source of quite a lot of conflict in, in the future because it is a finite resource. You know, I mean, we, li we live on this hugely watery planet, don't we, where two thirds of the surface are covered by water, but but of the of that only only um three percent is fresh you know so straight away you can realize we don't use that there isn't that so much available to us and of that three percent you know it's a fraction that we can access most of it's locked up in ice not some groundwater so that, that's that stuff is readily available in surface waters and rivers and lakes is a tiny 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 fraction and it's sufficient for us but it's just you know it does need sort of care in how we use it and, I th and at the moment we, we perhaps it's not surprising but of all the water that falls on the earth, however many thousand cubic kilometers it is a, a year, we sort of use about a third of it, you know, for our own ends uh, as humans, which is quite a huge chunk, isn't it? And so the other two thirds are, you know, recycling through nature. And so with a growing population set to, you know, perhaps almost double in the next 50 years, you can see that it's gonna have a huge, a huge impact. And without mixing our maths of that third, um, of the, the water that is produced on the planet that we consume, 80% of it, um, we put back into the environment untreated. We just exactly. discharge it. Right. Only 20%, according to the UN, of our global wastewater, um, and, that, and that wastewater can contain anything from human waste to chemicals, to you know, industrial discharges, only 20% of the water that we use globally is, is treated before it's just pushed back into the environment. Mm. That has a massive effect on ecosystems. Mm. Mm. Yeah. And we saw that, didn't we, in COVID when um, Venice locked down. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, yeah. you know, within three weeks of that lockdown in Venice, the dolphins had once again, the porpoises had once again returned to the canals um, and we're actually swimming round. Yeah, I mean, we've done, done a pretty good job in, in the UK over, over the, um, the last few decades of cleaning up, cleaning up our acts, you know, um, I think spurred on by being part of the EU, you know, and then sort of their standards. I, mean, I, I do remember swimming in the sea as a child in Bexhill, you know, and the sewage pipe didn't go out very far, you know, <laughs> depending on which way the tide was, you could have a pretty miserable session occasionally. Yeah, so, uh, that has they came, when I when I first came to Wales, um, I went to Swansea University and there were posters up, ironic posters at the university, which said, you don't swim in Swansea Bay, you just go through the motions. Um, <laughs> but, but we have a responsibility to to um, the rest of the world because we, um, you know, spearheaded industrialization mm. and as a nation we benefited so much from this process we shouldn't be wagging our fingers 
at the other nations of the world and saying, clean up your act. These, the, the, the nations that are struggling at the moment, we should be offering help and support and solutions. And this is where people's voice, um, the people can make their voices heard when the foreign aid budget gets slashed um, and the money gets moved to, um, you know, uh, as an extension of the, our own, the political will of our own nation. Um, you know, you can actually speak through the ballot box or join organizations that um, will represent your voice if you don't feel that you want to stand up in person. Yeah, that's why right. I know. I mean, sometimes I get the impression that people think, well, what can I, does it matter what I do? Because actually the, you know, there's, um, the global population is growing so fast, you know, my, my little effort's gonna be dwarfed. But I guess that sort of hides the fact that our consumption in the West is so, so vastly greater than, than, than the, you know, the majority south of, of the world. That I, you know, irrespective of population, we're, we're still the ones producing all the, all, all the pollution. You know, I mean, you can see in our, we mentioned in our water, we 150 litres per person per day in the, in the UK. But, you know, a sort of global average in the South is about sort of 25 litres is what people use, you know. Um, so, uh, yeah, so it definitely is upon us to kind of try and um, reduce our consumption a bit. And you can do that really easily without any, without any um, drop in living standards. I mean, it's quite possible just through technological solutions to have to kind of pretty much halve your water consumption in the house. And we are going to move that way because water's scarce, isn't it? You know, I mean, so one of the big things that drives that is having a water meter, and a lot of people are on that now because you just think, oh gosh, you know, it saves me money as well. You know, so yeah. uh, that obviously is a good motivating factor. Um, but we're still not far. We still, when it comes to water, we're still not really got it got it in our heads to conserve it. You know, I, I must say, I guess because it's still cheap. And, you know, really, I mean, it's. it's even if you've got a water meter, it's still a very small amount of your sort of out, outgoing, you know, as, as a household. It's but, um, because as well, we, we can turn on the tap and have potable water. Mm. In those areas of the world, when you go on holiday and you have to buy bottled water, um, it makes you far more conscious of the amount of water that you're consuming. It really does. Um, and yeah. It's true, yeah, isn't it? it I never, I never noticed that when, it, when I'm camping, you know, and you suddenly think, gosh, I'm carrying all this water, <laughs> lugging it around, and they just forget about it, don't you? And it's so heavy and so tiresome to move. It's a bit of an insight into how most people live around the world, isn't it, and the, the value of it. You know? mm. Guys, you've been wonderful, as always. We've had a really good natter. Are there any resources or anything else you'd like to add before we finish? Every year, the UN has uh, a World Water Day. Um, it generally falls towards the end of March. So this year it was the 22nd of March um, and it was completely overshadowed by the coronavirus outbreak, um, which, is, which was really sad. But if you want to, to look at resources, um, then you can check out worldwaterday.org um, and that will present you with the, the 2020 resources including uh, a, a toolkit on just the sort of things that um, Marcus was talking about and how you can um, decrease your own water consumption, but also help others um, in the developing world. And we couldn't talk about water without um, giving a plug for Water Aid as well, um, which is an international charity that does so much in this field. Thanks, Neil. Yeah, I think I, mean, <clears throat> I used to work with water conservation as a job, you know, so I could probably natter for ages about technical solutions, taps and fittings, but I don't know if that's really the most important thing because we talked about the overlap between um, an environmental lifestyle addressing water issues and, and just generally with energy and everything else. And it's just about consuming a bit a bit less, being conscious. So I think just, just make that shift in your mind away from consumption and to more, more rejoicing and thankfulness to what you got. Uh, and yeah, and, and you'll, you'll get pretty close. I found some really helpful things for around the house, which I thought I'd just bring up now. So I've been using something called an eco egg. 
uh, which is an egg with minerals in it that washes your clothes. You don't use any laundry detergent or, or, or any, so you're reducing your plastic load to start mm -hmm. with. And you fill it up with these little tiny balls that go into the egg and, um, and the egg lasts forever. And you just keep on buying the little minerals that go in there to top it up. Um, so that's one thing that I found really helpful. Um, it, uh, you have to get used to the fact that your washing no longer smells of, um, uh, man-made chemicals it smells of nothing particularly but um so you have to get your head around that but apart from that um so i found that really helpful um and the other thing is actually i was thinking about resources and and how i i know i'm always constantly thinking to myself what can i do next what can i do to to help this because actually sometimes it's very difficult for someone joe blogs in the street to know how to help um and actually watching things like this making yourself aware reposting this type of thing listening to other um posts and just constantly bombarding people with 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 stuff so that there's a constant supply of people thinking about these issues um is a really good thing to do so if you can't do anything else just you know repost and share mm. i mentioned about uh, showers earlier five minute showers um and uh, girls are lovely, that's the thing. well yeah <laughs> uh, with teenage daughters that is yeah um but submariners submariners when they have a shower um they press a button and um the water sprays out for like 20 seconds and then stops and then they lather up and do everything and then they press the button again and they have another 20 seconds and that's it because ironically even though they're surrounded by water water is a very scarce resource on a submarine and apparently one of the things they do is sort of like the employee of the week or whatever they they call it gets to take a hollywood shower that's what it's called a hollywood shower where the uh, the water runs for three minutes <laughs> no, no, um and I, I i thought to myself yeah maybe we should stop taking hollywood showers um, and, and think about the way that we consume water in that, in, in that environment. Because that, just like the clothes, it has a personal impact upon us. And that raises the profile in our heads and helps us to be aware of it and then share it on social media and stuff. Mm. Brilliant. Well, one more thing, just a quick, very quick one, so I think it's on mind. Um, and it's a, it goes across the board environmentally as well. Um, a, a good way to, to help save the planet is to patch up your marriage and relationship because when you live alone you use 40 percent more water for example and the same for energy so actually living together um, in community is much better than trying to do everything on your own you know so it's um, slightly facetious but actually Im important you know um if we can live together as people you know rather than trying to splintering off into our own little little units that has a big impact as well thanks marcus thank you um marcus do you want to finish in prayer for us Certainly. Thank you. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for the gift of water and the gift of this beautiful earth so shaped um, by water. And we thank you, Lord, that you give in abundance all that we need, but we do recognise that through the way that we live and through our selfishness and greed and ignorance sometimes, we do not always share your good gifts with others. So help us to become more conscious of the way we live, that we can live in ways that share your good gifts with all people, both in this generation and through all generations. And let our model be Christ, who did not cling to equality with you, but entered himself taking the form of a servant. Let that be uh, our inspiration too. We ask this in the name of Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Amen.